Well, for more, we can speak to Matthew Duare from Ipsos Polling. Matthew, hello to you, and thank you for joining uh, Paris Direct uh, this weekend. Um, real quickly, in that report, I don't know if you caught it, but we were talking about the abstention rate from those EU Parliament elections. Will we see a similar abstention rate uh, when uh, the first round of voting begins on June 30th? First, the, the abstention rate at the European elections was not particularly high for uh, a European election. And we uh, expect that uh, the political tension uh, aroused by the snap elections will probably prompt more voters to participate in those legislative elections than did in 2022, when uh, uh, the normal legislative elections were held after a presidential election. And we know that when uh, legislative elections uh, are held after a presidential election, interest is far uh, far smaller because because of course for for people the most important election is the presidential but i would say by default a snap legislative election is probably the second most important to voters yeah and, and all, on top of that for our international viewers it's oh, worth pointing out that france has this two round voting system so alliances become very key here and that's what we're seeing here we're seeing the the, the far right leading the polls, and then a left-wing alliance in second place. Uh, in that previous report, we're looking at some various young people, some of them saying that the far right is no longer taboo. Is that what Ipso sees in its polling as well? Absolutely. 25% of uh, people under 25 voted uh, for the national rally uh, at the European election, and you can probably expect a similar proportion in the legislative elections. The, the main findings, though, is that uh, the, the, the youngest voters, the ones under 25, are more on the left than the ones between 25 and 34, for example. That is that where the uh, Rassemblement National, Jordan Bardella's party, is really particularly strong is among people who are already working, not students any longer, and uh, particularly, of course, the ones uh, who struggle to make ends meet, but uh, also increasingly uh, older people who were more reluctant to vote uh, for the far right, and also uh, surprisingly more uh, upper class people who were also historically uh, more reluctant. So. Globally, we now have something like a catch-all party. I'm wondering if we have a gender divide. We saw this well-published study earlier this year that mentioned that uh, young men are leaning more and more conservative while young women are becoming more liberal. Today, we're going to have a protest with women uh, on women's rights issues against the far right. Is that gender divide, uh, divide bearing out here in France as well? Yeah, absolutely. And the gender divide has been studied by Ipsos across 25 nations, and you can find it almost everywhere. It's not particularly new. Uh, actually, uh, the trend in France has been that uh, uh, Le Pen's and Badela's party has been improving its uh, scores among women, because at first they had a very huge deficit among women. But of course, the, the mere fact that uh, Marine Le Pen stood for candidate from uh, 2012 has uh, considerably increased their appeal to women. But still, there is a gap, particularly among younger people. Yeah, the, the popular New Front Alliance, the left-wing alliance, polling in second place. Um, who are they going to have to try to lure to perhaps surprise the far right in these snap legislative elections? Actually, there is uh, an extreme uncertainty because the electorate is almost evenly divided into three blocks. Even though uh, Macron's party seems to be lagging far behind, when you uh, basically add up uh, all the center-right parties, you have also one-third of the electorate. So this is the worst-case scenario for poll pollsters, because that means that we could have a lot of three-way races where uh, basically only a few votes can make a difference. So that really makes the runoff uh, results extremely unpredictable. And of course, a lot would depend on, uh, I would say, the mere uh, order of arrivals uh, across all uh, constituencies with very different local situations. So it's very difficult to uh, anticipate 
what the future National Assembly will look like. It's almost impossible to infer seats from uh, votes for, for the moment. We will have to, to wait until the, the dust sets after the, the first round. Yeah, a lot of sleepless nights coming up for you, Matthew, I'm guessing. Uh, I, I'm going to put you in that difficult position anyway. Let's assume the far right and the left-wing alliance make it to the second round of voting. I mean, this is legislative election, so it depends on a seat-by-seat -seat basis. But let's just assume that those two are the main parties moving forward. Where does that center bit of France's population or the center right, where do they tend to look? More to the left or will they be lured by the far right? There is an assumption, uh, and we will measure it very attentively uh, in every constituency, because once again, you can't make any uh, generalization. But it's clear that there is now uh, uh, a, li a likely scenario where uh, center-right people would be more likely to vote for the far right uh, than for the far left. But it all depends on whether they consider the local candidate to be uh, an extremist within its, uh, his uh, or her alliance or, mo or more of a moderate. So once again, it will uh, also depend. Uh, if the... Um, if the left-wing candidate in the runoff is uh, someone from Mélenchon's party, he or she will probably struggle to garner votes from the moderate voters. And uh, probably, of course, uh, the, the, the candidates, the National Rally could, uh, could, uh, could uh, present with, uh, who would have a, 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 a insufficient local anchorage uh, or a bad reputation, could also uh, struggle to garner votes from the moderate voters, but there is, uh, for the moment, it seems that clearly the balance is tipping to the right. Yeah, a lot of uncertainty also a week is a political lifetime. Matthew, I hope we can have you back to help us make sense of whatever round one's results are. Thank you very much. Matthew Duare from Ipsos. You're welcome. You're welcome.